Hey, what's up? Welcome to DGen Ed. That's degenerative education, meaning none of this is financial advice. Just me, having fun, looking at charts like the chart behind me, which is of ChargePoint, ticker symbol CHPT, which closed on the day today, August 1st, at a price of $1.99, being down a little over 8% on the day, but bouncing about one penny in the after hours, closing the after hours trading session at a price of $2 a share. So I am going to be diving into the charge point chart here, but I will also be going over blink charging as well as EVgo. So look for timestamps down below for those tickers if you're more interested in them. But the bulk of my analysis is going to focus here on charge point. And so like I had said, it came down about 8% over the course of the day. And we can see here, we have this massive bearish engulfing candle. So it doesn't look too good. And also it does look like it has been struggling to hold above this purple uptrend, which I had previously drawn as the neckline for this head and shoulders here. And from that, we can see that we did get a measured move, I believe, to you know greater extent than what I would have expected. The measured move would have brought price down to around $1.40, but it came down to a low of $1.21. And so now we are testing that level that was prior support over here, then became resistance over here and we have been struggling to hold above it. And taking a step back, looking at the chart, one could perhaps argue that we are looking at a bull flag here, big move to the upside, followed by consolidation. However, since we have been struggling to really hold above this uptrend in you know two days in a row, we haven't really been able to do that uh, with the exception of the moves over here. But following that pullback, following the formation of the flagpole to that bear flag, uh, we haven't been able to get multiple days closing multiple days in a row closing above that uptrend. So that does look pretty concerning to me. Yesterday's high on July 31st was $2.27. So I'd say that'd be a great level to see us closing the week tomorrow, August 2nd, above that level. But I suspect that's going to be pretty difficult. And so what I would settle for is a close above 216 or 217, that being the 236 from this Fibonacci retracement here, also corresponding with price getting back up to that uptrend as we are below it now, closing just below the 382 at a price of $1.99.7. So again, not only bearish engulfing candle here, but a close below this level. So I don't think it's looking too too good and you know while I was hoping price would be getting up to around 250 maybe three it does seem to have lost that momentum and I suspect that we will see a rejection from this purple uptrend and we will start to make lower lows coming down here with this prior low hit on July 19th at a price of $1.86, which also you know corresponded with the 50% retracement here at $1.86. And very interesting, also corresponded with the 236 from this retracement to the upside here at $1.85.9. So I just find that really neat that it did come down to that level, but now that it has bounced and has gotten rejected from the 236 over here, and it looks like it's starting to break below the 382, I suspect we will be breaking below the 50% level, that's at 186. And I suspect that we will be testing this yellow downtrend as support. And so if we take a step back, we can see where that originates from. I drew that based on the high from February 12th, that being at a price of 237. And then the other pivot point here being at the high of 206, which was hit on May 14th. We did get you know a wick above that level right here on February 15th as well as you know, a kiss of that level, just a very small pierce of it on June 12th. And so you know, I do think that trend line has been a very notable level of resistance here, barely getting up to it before getting rejected. And so I think that we could be retesting that level as support 
and I think that could coincide with retesting this golden pocket here. That's the 65% retracement up to the 618, ranging from a price of, you know, really just like right around $1.70. Don't need to be exact to the penny here, just thinking about price pulling down to around that level. Maybe $1.69 is a good dip buying level, you know, thinking about that, just having fun with it. Uh, but that is where I could see price going. I think that the top is in, and I think over the course of the next couple weeks, we will be seeing a test of right around 170. And if that level doesn't hold, uh, you know, I definitely think price could be coming down to around $1.50. That does correspond with the 786 right here in yellow at a price of $1.53 also corresponding with the golden pocket over here, ranging from a price of around $1.51 up to $1.54. That would be coinciding with a test of this downtrend around the middle of October. So it's quite possible we might be seeing a multi-month bleed stair-stepping our way down these retracements, and maybe we even make our way to this uptrend based on these pivot lows here. And you know that could be bringing price to right around $1.44, just below $1.50, coinciding with a convergence of not only that red uptrend, but also that yellow downtrend. Uh, but you know, the 786, perhaps, you know, I should mention this is right around 140 from this retracement. Maybe we test that. I feel like, you know, I'm leaning more towards uh, you know, price coming down to $1.50. From what I could see, most of the max pains for the next month are at $2. Current price is around there, but that doesn't mean price is going to hold. Price can definitely break much lower than max pain. And I believe the second to last one for the month of August is $1.50. So I could definitely see a drawdown. So I do think that we could be seeing some very nice dip buying opportunities, even though, you know, I was hoping we would be seeing price get above, you know, 250 up to that level. As we did, you know, looking at this time frame, we did hit a higher high here of, you know, 244. The high over here was at a price, like I said, of 237. So we did pierce that level. We did get one close above it closing on July 16th at a price of, well, actually 237, so right at that level. Um, but we couldn't hold it. We got one close up there, and then we quickly did fade the following day, July 17th, pulling back almost 9%, and then, like I said, consolidating here. So I think this is a bear flag, and I don't think we're going to be going up to 250. If we do, maybe it's just a short-term thing. I think that we are going to be testing this downtrend. Either 170 or 150 seems likely to me. And with that being said, my sentiment's gonna be pretty similar across all of the EV charts. And so if I do look over at Blink Charging, ticker symbol BLNK, did get a massive bearish engulfing candle on the day, down at nearly 7%, closing at a price of 306. I could see this one pulling back to the 786 here at 283. I've definitely talked about that level in the comments, and I do think price will be coming down there, perhaps coinciding with the test of this uptrend. That would be coming to that level around the 21st of August. So that is what I would be looking for. But you know, we also have broken below that uptrend in the past. We could be doing that again, but like I said, you know, while three dollars, you know, might seem like a great dip buying opportunity, I do think two eighty three will be hit. But with earnings coming up on August seventh, maybe we do see a bounce there. Maybe we see a drawdown to two eighty three, and then we start to move higher. And then next on the list is EVGO, ticker symbol EVGO. This one has had quite a big move to the upside. This retracement here represents going from the low of 165 up to the high. That represents a nearly 200% swing to the upside, around 185, 86% up, so pretty nice. But just like the other ones, bearish engulfing candle for the day, coming down almost 6%. 
closing at a price of 362. For this one, you know, we're pretty close to those highs as we did hit them today at a price of $4.70. So a pretty massive drawdown considering that big move to the upside. And so from there, it does look like we've pulled back from the high over 20% down from that high of 470 perhaps 465 is going to hold as support let's see that level is based on these pivot lows over here but you know since that was a prior support over here and hasn't really been tested as resistance too much i don't think it's going to be that notable of a level of support and i could see a price coming down lower uh, you know, I would say, you know, at least to $3 a share, the golden pocket here is between $272 to $282. Uh, so I could see price getting down there, but, you know, on the way to that is getting to $3 a share. Uh, but uh, let's see, it looks like it was a measured move that I had drawn from this inverse head and shoulders. And the pivot high that I see over here from March 6th, was at a price of 337. And if I draw a horizontal line there, we can see 337 marked on the side there. I would think that might be a level to be acting as support. Uh, we can see that, you know, there hasn't been much support around there, uh, but we did, you know, get a bounce here. And actually, though, since that level was already tested, I think it's more likely to break below 337, at least coming down to the 50% level at 317.5. And it does look like earnings were reported today, and so that is likely why we saw the big move to the upside, but then the massive sell-off. And if we do look at this, this is a classic great example of bearish divergence where we have higher highs going in with the price, massive sell-off, bearish engulfing candle, putting in a very massive topping signal here with the big wick up closing near the lows, definitely in the bottom quarter, perhaps the bottom 10% of trading for the day. And that bearish engulfing candle does suggest that the top is in because with these higher highs, we have lower highs in the RSI also, a lot of volume suggesting that this is going to continue to the downside. And then looking over at ChargePoint, since I didn't mention it, their earnings are at the beginning of September. So we do have about a month before we see how those earnings turn out. But like I said, I think this one's coming down to 170, maybe 150. Great dip buying opportunities there. But, you know, there might also be some time following those dips. So always good to be patient, always good to wait for those dips to play out and slowly be accumulating as, you know, they might not be quick dips like this. It could be a dip and a fade down at this downtrending yellow trend line. So do keep that in mind. But, you know, those are just my thoughts. If you found them helpful, make sure you like the video, share your thoughts in the comments down below, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks a lot for watching.